Hello everybody, and we're about to continue our Let's Play series of Dark Souls 3, see where adventure is going to be taking us next. So in our last episode, we were working our way through Archdragon Peak, and made our way over to the Great Belfry. Which means we've only got one thing left to do in this area, which is take on the Nameless King. Always a fun time. <laughs> Probably one of the tougher fights in the game. Sometimes it feels like the toughest fight in the game. It can be quite the challenge. So this might take several tries, but we'll see how it goes. Especially we'll see how Frost works on everything. I'm not sure Frost will really impact him very much. Such a cool scene though. Probably one of the coolest arenas in the whole game, if I had to say. It's always something where you can actually fight on clouds, but away we go. To take on Gwyn's son. What a cool entrance, too. It's like so awesome. found the first phase to be a little trickier actually. Okay, where's he going? Oh. I oh, can't see where he went. Not to be expected I guess for the first try. always found the first phase to be trickier than the second one. Camera time is lovely. But away we go. We are pretty much going to be planning this for the whole episode. So this might take quite a while. <laughs> it looks like we can inflict frost on... I think the... I forget the name of the actual dragon he's riding. And the fire. <laughs> mm. 
I have yet to master this fight. <laughs> Should do it. So close on that one. <laughs> Probably should have taken a heal. Now the fun part, even though I find the first phase harder, it doesn't make the second phase easier. <laughs> I think on that one. should switch shields temporarily to have the fire one on with the lightning one. If we take a quick look here, instead of having our morning star, we can throw on our dragon crest shields around here somewhere. That way we can switch between our two shields. So not sure we're going to be needing our staff for this fight. So that might be a good change here. That way we can alternate between our fire protection and our lightning protection.
and there is not. Closer here. Oh, fire still got us on that one. In the end, it might just be a little bit of luck with that. Or I have to run more. Maybe that's what it is. So the fire shield is not doing what I thought it would do. Leave that on, and just in case we want the Morning Star, we'll still leave that on. Probably just have to run in the right direction, potentially, to avoid that fire. Forgot how I handled that the last couple times we've done the Nameless King. An episode of death. <laughs> at the slam. I think we're going to be good on this one. Okay, let's see how it goes here. Where the fight begins. Now, getting this phase down might also take a couple of tries. <laughs>
and there we go. Soul of the Nameless King. Again, the second phase is fun. First phase, I've never grown to figure that one out. It's always getting through the first phase. That is the hard part. And if you have a pretty high lightning resistance shield, you can pretty much handle the second phase usually. You should have to time a couple jumps and dodges. Okay, we can kind of set everything back up the way we had it. I think we're looking pretty good now. We don't need our embers on anymore. And we can throw on our Ash and Estus flask. We probably want to get that back the way we had it before. And we gotta get all the items. Okay, got a Titanite slab for our troubles. And of course the blue sky has returned. It makes it kind of almost happy over here. <laughs> like a nice summer day. <laughs> you don't get to see too much sunshine in Dark Souls. The Dragon Slayer set. And Dragon Slayer Spear. Take a quick look at all of these things. The Nameless King was once a dragon slaying god of war before he sacrificed everything to ally himself with the ancient dragons. Golden line armor associated with Dragon Slayer Ornstein from the Age of Gods and imbued with the strength of lightning. In the Dragonless Age, this knight, who long guarded the Rune Cathedral, left the land in search of the Nameless King. So pretty cool. And, oh, the weapon too, we want to check that out as well. If we can find it, there we go. Cross spear associated with Ornstein the Dragon Slayer, a weapon of the gods imbued with the strength of lightning. Two handed thrust utilizes the support of the cross and requires great might, but one can pierce deep into the flesh of dragons and send mere men flying. I always wonder if that would be a good weapon against a Medir, seeing as it is essentially for dragons, as far as slaying them and everything. But that wraps up Arch Dragon Peak. And as far as like souls and levels, we're pretty much maxed out where we want to be. We're level 125. 30 Vigor, 14 Attunement, 32 Endurance. I pumped up Vitality just a little bit so that we could wear our Outrider set plus have all the weapons we want to have and to hold the Lothric Knight Shield when needed. So let's go back to our Dragon Crest for now. And I picked up the Ring of Favor to switch out for the Havel's Ring. And the Ring of Favor, of course, is by the Pontiff Beasts. Okay, let's see, let's go back to Firelink Shrine. So our souls really don't hold much meaning anymore. It's strictly just to buy things or upgrades, but we're not leveling up anymore. Items that we can take a look at. Storm Curve Sword. I've always thought that looked cool. 
I've yet to try it, though. Curved sword imbued with the strength of the Storm Drake. The Nameless King, ally of the ancient dragons, fought beside the Storm Drake in countless battles. When the great beast fell, the king claimed his soul, as was custom in the age of the gods. Imbue blade with a wrath of storm in a spinning motion, and follow with a strong attack to bear the wrath upon foes. Then, of course, we have the Nameless King's item. A dragon hunting weapon from the age of the gods, the earliest form of the cross spear, serving as both sword and spear. Its owner was the Nameless King and deific hunter of dragons. The sword spear is imbued with lightning, of which he was the heir. I took the mantle. Then, of course, we have his outfit set we can take a look at. Oh, we never looked at Gundyr's outfit set, did we? Interesting. Okay, Dragon Slayer armor. Dragon scale armor of a nameless king who was allied to the ancient dragons. Dragon scales are razor sharp and cannot be burned. Crown of a nameless king who was allied to the ancient dragons. This golden crown, buried amidst long strands of bristling ash, said to closely resemble that of the First Lord. Pretty cool. Definitely cool to see all the pieces here. Ashen One. Okay, I think... I wonder if, if we talk to Andre, if that sets in motion Hawkeye, or Hawkwood. <laughs> I always forget his name. Ah, well met. Tis good to see ye in good health. What needs smithing this day? Well, we can switch our Estus back the way we had it. There are two ways to simple reinforce infusion. Let's just talk about infusion. In oh, by the way. If you find any, they okay, can we got that weapons already. Weapons and but when, but uh, they so there are two. Okay, I guess he's not going to mention. So I think we just do it ourselves then and head on over to where the abyss watchers were. Should be there anyway. I don't think we missed anything for his quest. He can be kind of a tricky fight too. Oh, maybe we did miss something. Huh. That's a shame. Maybe we can find him somewhere in Firelink. Or maybe we have to summon him in Arch Dragon Peak potentially. And then he might do something there. Totally forgetting what he does. Not that it's super important, but it's always kind of cool to see that play out. See if he's anywhere over here. We did grab his shield already. I'm not seeing him anywhere. Okay, he's not over here either. Creepy. Let's take a quick trip on over to Archdragon Peak again and see what happens if we can even still summon him for part of this. I don't think he does much though. So let's travel.
If not, we'll be wrapping this one on up and in our next one, probably heading on over to Snowfield and fully explore the Ashes of Ariandel DLC. Not seeing a summon sign anywhere. We might have missed out on that. Yep, not seeing it, so it looks like we won't be doing that for this playthrough, which is kind of a shame. I bet we were supposed to summon him right around here, and then he just kind of runs that way and steals something for his dragon quest. I don't see any summon signs anymore. So we might have missed it. That's probably about it for this one then. About 30 minutes in here, so it's kind of a nice stopping point, especially because we just wrapped up Arch Dragon Peak. And then in our next one, we'll head on over to Snowfield. Fully explore this, eventually make our way in over. I think we have another pretty early on fight with, forgetting the names, it's a wolf fight with a hunter. Crave Tender, maybe? take on that and then that might take two or three episodes to wrap up the painted world of Ariandel depending on how Sister Freed goes <laughs> another tough fight but after that then we head on over to the Ringed City DLC and we're getting closer and closer to our conclusion of this playthrough I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and we'll be talking again real soon Okay, so just to add this back to the back end of our episode, what we forgot to do is do Path of the Dragon Gesture over here, and that'll pick up an item, which should trigger Hawkwood. So we have to do Path of the Dragon, of course. Twinkling Dragon Torso Stone. There we go. Now we have the entire set that you can use to become a dragon. Now that we have that... We can head on over to Firelink and talk to Andre now, and he should let us know that Hawkwood is where his whereabouts are. Oh, you've
returned. I was hoping to see you. That crestfallen ass Hawkwood, he handed me this. He's changed a great deal since he left this place. Graven of face, he asked me to give it ye. Hawkwood's sword crest. Well, now that that task is concluded, what would you have me smith today? Pretty be careful. I don't. <laughs> okay, we can take a quick look now. Bloodstained sword grass of Hawkwood, deserter of the Undead Legion. Traditionally, the Undead Legion of Farron sends the gravest of messages using sword grass. Come to the mausoleum in Farron. Only one take the path of the ancient dragons. Okay, so now we get to have that fight. <laughs> there we go. Got some fancy moves. Frost effect on him. Uh. I forget how many Estus charges he gets. Fancy move there. Okay, that might be the last of them. We've got the frost build up again. Oh, he is fresh out.
And there we go. You are a dragon. More dragon than I. Okay, Twinkling Dragon Headstone. Pretty cool little side quest there. About how Hawk Hawkwood is trying to become a dragon, probably because he failed as one of the Abyss Watchers. And was trying to find some semblance of meaning in his role. But now he is no longer part of our journey. And now I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and we'll be talking again real soon.